Hey guys, Nas here with another video. In this video, I'll be going over the best build for Aber's Reckoning. This skill took the longest to test as the final result may shock you from what is believed to be the right way to build it. So with that out the way, let's get into this, yeah? For jobs, you'll want Throne to be on the Arms Master for the optimal damage. But if you're using Arms Master on someone else, then any job with the staff works fine with the Conjurer being the best. If you haven't unlocked either job, then check the description for my guide. Since Aber's Reckoning scales off of speed, it's believed you want to stack as much speed as possible. This is actually not the case, as physical attack outweighs speed as long as you haven't hit the stat cap of 999, so for weapons, we'll want the battle-tested blade. This will increase our damage even though we're using a dagger for Aber's. You can get the battle-tested blade from Bandalam after finishing Hankari's main story in Crackridge Harbor. For daggers, we'll want the battle-tested daggers as it gives us 55 more strength over the highest speed dagger which is overall more damage. You can get this from Plot after completing Casty's Chapter 2. You'll need to complete Malia's side quest. After doing so, she'll be located in her garden during the day and in the tavern in the night. And for staffs, we'll want the Giant's Club which has the same effect as the sword and its stacks. You can acquire this in Ivory Ravine. For shields, we'll want Bodyguard's Vantage, which can be obtained after completing Veronica's side quest. You can start it after you finish Agnia's story. She'll be right here in New Delsta. After doing so, go talk to Grandma and come back to finish the side quest. There is no headpiece that gives us physical attack, so we'll be getting some speed with the cloth headband. You can obtain it from this boy in Ku. Just like our headpiece, there is no chest piece with physical attack, so Protector's Vestment is our best option. You can acquire this in the Nameless Village. Inquire with this NPC, then it's available at the shop. Now for our accessories. Fangs of Ferocity will increase our damage when boosting. Since we can only use Aber's Reckoning by boosting, this is a no-brainer and it could be found in the Curious Nest Cave. Finisher's Claw will increase our critical damage when we crit. We'll always be critting so this is another easy pick and it could be obtained in the Nameless Isle. Next we'll cover skills. After testing out all potential combinations, these are the four to perform the best for boss fights. Deal more damage from Warrior. This allows us to surpass the damage cap and hit the new one. Peak performance from Arms Master. This will increase our damage by 50% as long as we're full on HP. BP Generation from Conjurer. This will allow us to have a chance to refund our 3 BP we'll be using. And lastly, you'll either want Fleet Foot from Teeth for more speed or Summon Strength from Warrior if you haven't hit the 999 cap yet. Now that we're set up, let's go over Teammate Synergy. Tenemos is our first staple, he applies the physical down for free. Scholar's the sub job because Elemental Barrage paired with his lane power can erase 6 to 8 shields no matter what the enemy is weak to. Next up is Casty. She's used to give BP to all our allies each turn. Medical Concoction is the best support in the game and we'll be taking advantage of it. Our last member is Particio as we need someone to be an inventor so they could apply critical scope. Once he does his job, he can use Hired Helped Beasting to help whittle away any shield that's left. Their equipment isn't that important as we're the main damage dealer and they're just here for support. For skills, you'll want Boost Star from Merchant. Having an extra BP is always nice in case Casty goes last. A step ahead from Inventor. This allows you to take a turn before the initial fight begins as long as there's no ambush or surprise attack. This is completely busted and I abused it. Full power from Merchant so Casty and Tenemos can always use their latent powers. You can add any XP or JP passive since these three are all you need. Now that we're fully set up, let's do a quick battle to showcase how you generally want to use this build. We're going to want to defend with Tenemos as we don't want to break the enemy on our free turn. Particio's main purpose is to set up Critical Scope, which will let us guarantee critical hits for the next 4 turns. With Casty, we'll want to boost with our 2 BP, then Medical Concoction, and use our Latent Power to not consume any of our resources. Pomegranate Leaf twice, Diffusing and Strengthening Serum will give all our allies 4 BP. Now we'll want to max BP and Elemental Barrage while using our Latent Power to delete the enemy's shield. Okay, now we'll want to max BP into Abers with Latent Power. 
Oh wow, we got the god run. We'll want to do another Abers and we win. If you don't get the BP refund, just do a level 3 surprise attack and this is usually enough to kill any boss besides the secret one. Hopefully this video helped you defeat any boss that you were stuck on. And if you enjoyed this video, consider checking the description for more Octopath content. And don't forget, if this video brought value to you, please leave a like and consider subscribing to see more as I plan on making a ton of Octopath Traveler 2 videos and I play a wide array of RPG games and I break them down just like this. Until the next video, I'll see ya.